about yeah, yourself? I mean, there's, there's definitely times. I mean, even when you look out the course of the season, uh, you know, what would I tell my guys? The, the O line, uh, you know, no matter what the fucking scoreboard is, you play, um, you know, no, no smoking, no fucking clapping your hands, no smoking, back to bad plays. You go up to the line of scrimmage like nothing fucking happens, like a robot. And, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's something that's uh, easy for us. Watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. All right, good people. Um, we have some problems with the Dallas Cowboys. And we have the immediate question is, do we keep Mike McCarthy or not keep Mike McCarthy? We definitely have Mike McCarthy, and I think what the problem is, is maybe we're asking Mike McCarthy to be something that he's not. And you're probably saying, what are you talking about? The Dallas Cowboys have had three years in a row, three years in a row where they've won 12 games. Great regular seasons. And somehow, some way, we just don't seem to get it done. In crunch time, we actually have a vortex of a multitude of things that are wrong with the Cowboys. Um, but here's where looking a little deeper in with Mike, coach, Mike McCarthy's coaching. And I hate to say this to everybody out there who is looking at Jerry Jones being emotional and not having the press conferences and hot putting on this jet and everything else and the speculation of Mike McCarthy is going to be fired. Mike McCarthy is going to be here the coach of next year. I can, you know, I, I can say with 95% certainty, Mike McCarthy will be here for a couple of reasons. One, he got the most out of Dak Prescott during the regular season. Two, he still has a year left on his contract, and the Joneses don't want to pay him for a year not being here. Let's be clear here. I don't know if they'll do an extension, which would be a mistake because you're basically making him a lame duck, but you either should fire him or extend him. I, it, it's crazy as it sounds, but here's the thing. We have been here before. You think about the debacle last year against San Francisco, where we had a muddle huddle in the last play of Zeke Elliott's career as playing center. We remember how we were all here just like this. Deja vu. They literally pounded on Mike McCarthy in the offseason. He walked around like a dog with his tail between his legs that had been beaten in the nose with the newspaper. He's not going anywhere, guys. He's not. Here's the thing. When I look at his coaching record with Green Bay, now he is a Super Bowl winning coach. That season, 2010, they got lightning in a bottle. They were 10 and 6, and much like the Packers that just came in and molly whopped us, they did the same thing in Philadelphia, Atlanta, and the Bill, excuse me, the Bears to make it to the Super Bowl and beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. But in the time after that, here's what's crazy. So the year after, the year after they won the Super Bowl, Mike McCarthy is 15 and one. And they were one and done. The next year, 11 and five. Not a bad season. One win, one loss. The next year, he's eight and seven, did make the playoffs. Uh, one and done. The next year after that, 12 and 14. 12 and 14. You look and say, hey, that's great. That 12 and 14, lost in the divisional rounds. 10 and 6, lost in the divisional rounds. 10 and 6, lost in the divisional rounds. That's Mike McCarthy. 
Mike McCarthy always has a good team, but only one that was good enough to win the Super Bowl. I, I don't want to look at it like that and say it, but that's the reality. And we're expecting more from him than what he has shown. That 2010 team, Aaron Rodgers, 28 TDs, 11 interceptions, number three defense, and they got on a hot streak uh, in the end. But everything else that you have here is Mike McCarthy, incredible regular season coach, a 500 guy when it comes to playoffs, 11 and 11. And that's it. Now, again, I don't think Jerry Jones is going to um, fire him. I don't. But you have to wonder, what is he going to do? Um, what is he going to do differently? That's the bigger question. Now, we've got Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn, who is an incredible defensive mind. And right now, I believe he's got two interviews set. I mean, he's got five interviews set up. Five interviews set up. Five. That's freaking insane. But I think the problem is, with the defense that he has, the flaw is we are a defense that needs to have a lead. So that way we don't ex get exposed by the running game. Now, maybe it wouldn't have been so bad if we had had good linebackers and weren't using safeties. Um, if we weren't using safeties for linebackers. And this goes back, of course, to Jerry Jones. You can talk about Dak Prescott. And the thing is, is what you must do differently if you're going to keep Mike McCarthy is you got to surround him with more talent. I keep hearing everybody say, well, Dak's not the one. He needs everything perfect. Well, then why don't we try and make everything perfect? Why don't we go ahead and get ourselves a few players? I talked about this last year because last year people were saying, give Dak Prescott one more chance. And I said, how about we try this? If you're going, we're going to give Dak Prescott one more chance. How about you give him everything advantage that he could get? You could have gone out and got, you know, a Derrick Henry. So that way you replace Zeke Elliott. That might have helped Dak Prescott to have a running game that teams had to respect. Nobody respected our running game. How about you get yourself another stud offensive lineman? Could knowing that Terrence Steele was coming back from an ACL. He had good games and then he had Piss, piss poor ones. You had games where you were missing Tyron Smith. You had games you were missing even Zach Martin and, and Tyler Smith. Having a great swing tackle that could have filled in instead of just believing in our guys might have been a difference maker. And you need another, and, and we, we drafted Mozzie Smith, and, and that draft did not help us at all this season. Maybe it will next year. But getting another veteran defensive lineman might have helped as well, along with the linebackers. So if you're going to keep Mike McCarthy, and it sounds like they're going to, or even if you're going to bring in somebody else, you have to recognize that what you have been doing in the front office with player personnel is not enough. you got to do more. It's been... You know, I'm going to say that this has been crazy since Sunday. Um, I want to say, in some regards, I've, I've gone viral with um, melting down. People have laughed at me all over the place. You know, G-Bag Nation made us the uh, G-Bag of the day um, yesterday and so on. But the thing, even my wife has laughed at me, you know, with all of the stuff that's happened. The one thing I will say at least is, at least people have something to laugh about. I don't care if you laugh with me or at me. 
times like this, we all need a good laugh. And so if I can bring that to you guys, I'm okay with it. So let's see what ESPN has to say about moving on from Mike McCarthy. Oh, wrong one. Do they need to make a change that significant? Does Jerry Jones need to change coaches? Yes. Um, and, and, gee, it really has nothing to do. You know, I've sat on the network and talked about Mike McCarthy winning 12 games three years in a row. That's not something to bat an eye at or something to walk away from easily. I think the Green Bay game just signified how unprepared Dallas was, which was they were. shocking to me. Unprepared mentally as far as being ready to play unprepared schematically and think about this Matt LaFleur walked in there with a first time starting quarterback and went up and down the football field on this Dallas Cowboy team now the unfortunate part is as a head coach you take the brunt of that blame and Mike McCarthy at times I've defended because it's, we've talked about his job and he's done a tremendous job in the regular season but it's all about circumstance and context and what Troy said, there's an opposite argument to that. And obviously, that's a part of the argument, which he made, which is, is true. Yeah, you might not want to go through a new situation or a new coaching staff, or you might not want to move forward. The bottom line is this. If Jerry, one, is willing to give Bill Belichick the authority that you need to have in order to run an organization without the interference of the owner becoming – a, a polarizing figure and it just becomes about winning it's the best move you can make because the one mm -hmm. thing we've always made synonymous with bill belichick is that his team is going to be prepared and he would have true. a quarterback that's a significant upgrade over what he's had but when it comes to mike mccarthy which was hard for me to say because i'm a mike mccarthy fan the unpreparedness of the dallas cowboys in the playoff game against green bay it's all about coaching, unfortunately. And that's him and Dan Quinn. But Dan Quinn is not the head coach. That's exactly right. They and look, prepared. none of this is personal. I, this has nothing to do with Mike McCarthy. He's, a, am sure, a terrific human being. We sit here and we judge the jobs that people do. And in that situation, you are judged by what happens in your final game. When it goes that badly, the judgment is sometimes going to go in this direction. So, Kmart, look, I'm not a detective, but sometimes <laughs> I put a few things together. Jerry Jones has had ample opportunity. Yes. If, he was, if, if there was no question Mike McCarthy was coming back as his coach, he's had ample opportunity to say that. That game was on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Today is already Wednesday. He yes. hasn't done it that's one thing too bill belichick is out there i will be shocked absolutely shocked if there has not been at least some communication oh. back channel all that oh, kind of you already stuff, <laughs> right hit me on the two-way you already know those conversations yes yeah. whatever yes. the lingo is if, are we hitting me on the two-way no we don't say that now no 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 no. Okay. that's way don't say that whatever now whatever it is no. we're saying is that a breaker one nine i see about whatever it is we're doing here <laughs> but i'm going back to smoking and the bandit which is before anyone else but me in this conversation was born anyway the point i'm making is yes I'm telling you right now that Marcus, what Marcus is saying is exactly what's happening. And Troy Aikman said it too. Bill Belichick to the Cowboys makes too much sense not to happen. I love Belichick to the Cowboys. However, it is clear that the Cowboys have not been good enough. We understand that. But if you're Jerry Jones, if you think you can get Bill Belichick, then you get Bill Belichick. But if you can't, who else are you getting? I think it's easy to say Mike McCarthy is not good enough, but you got to have the answer that comes after that. Who's his replacement? Now, one thing I, I understand what, what Troy is saying, the fact that, you know, I, I don't think this is going to happen. You know, I, I, I wouldn't expect it to happen. I think Jerry Jones has, has been loyal to a fault sometimes. He's kept coaches longer than he probably should have. I understand as well his age. As players. And I understand right now, would he want to go through another coaching regime and a search and all that? Those are a lot of unknowns. But he might say, this isn't the guy. And I can't waste any more time seeing if this will work. Yeah, I, I fully agree. I think, listen, when you think about McCarthy, I, and I've said this, I mean, to, to move on, to fire people is easy. Yes. Hiring, hiring is the most difficult. Hiring thing, and right? starting Unless over. Unless you know you're going to hire someone who's better than Mike McCarthy is going to give you more than 12 wins a game, which I'm saying is going to be very difficult. You better have Belichick. And so the, the issue for Belichick, I, I think he would be fantastic in Dallas. I think it would work with Jerry. I think all of those things. My question would be, what, what's the holdup, right? If, if you're 
pursuing it now and you've, you're having the conversations, which you know what they're being had, like what, whatever the rules are, whatever they're not, <laughs> rest assured you got billionaires, they're, they're going to get a deal done, right? Like they, they, they don't wait around. So there has to be conversations being had. I would just say the hesitation to say, hey, I'm with Mike McCarthy would lend me to believe that something more is a- absolutely That's exactly right. right. Conversations are taking place. And look, I'm not a lawyer, but I easily could have been one. And the point <laughs> of it is that the first thing they teach you in law school is you never ask a question you don't already know the Amen. answer to. You don't fire a coach unless you yes. already have the next one ready That's right. to go. Those conversations yeah. somewhere along the line, Marcus, are taking place. I, I think that is standard operating procedure. Absolutely. I, it's just sort of the, the, the rules of the road here. So, Marcus, to me, Belichick to the the, to the Cowboys makes all the sense in the world. I don't think it's about control over personnel. I don't think it's about anything else. But right. he, 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 Jerry Jones can hand Bill Belichick the two things he wants. He wants a roster that is ready to yep. win right now. Yep. And he has a roster that has a chance to win a championship. Yep. He can yep. get his 15 wins. He can win his title. Yep. And he can go off into the sunset as the greatest coach of all time. Mm-hmm. It makes too much sense from both sides. But let's also let's also remember, and and I went off about this on Monday Night Countdown. Let's also remember who the owner of the Dallas Cowboys are. Yeah, we've said his name for a hundred times. How much are you willing to move aside and allow Bill Belichick to handle yeah. this organization like we saw him handle the New England Patriots? Because when we just start talking about Bill Belichick on the field, we all know what can happen. We all seen him have a tremendous amount of success. We've never seen Bill Belichick deal with an owner that's going to do an interview before he walks in the locker room. Mm-hmm. We've never seen him deal with an owner that's going to be on the radio all week long leading into a game. And I'm yeah. telling you, I came from this coaching tree. I played for Nick Saban and I played for Bill Parcells. I played for Bill Parcells when he was in Dallas. There were a lot of things he did not like about how the organization mm-hmm. was ran. And he did not have control over changing it. Mm-hmm. So as much as we talked about the coaches, I was there with uh, Bill Parcells. I was there with Wade Phillips. I was there with Jason Garrett. I believe Jerry Jones thought every one of those moves was inching him closer to a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. But guess what never changed? Mm -hmm. Jerry Jerry Jones. Jones. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. We could could relent about Bill Belichick. We could talk about it. We know he's a great coach. What is he willing to deal with? Here is what I would say about the Belichick conversation. This ain't forever. He ain't coaching 24 more mm-hmm. years, bro. This dude's going to be here maybe two or three. Yep. If he gets that victory and they and, and they have a team, it does not have to be a marriage, bro. He's just dating, right? He's literally <laughs> dating them. That's all you're doing, right? You got you got two got years you. in this thing, bro. Pack it in, hold bring on, the next on. one in. Let's go get it. Hold that, on. to me, makes the most sense. He don't want to be coaching Uh-oh. forever either. Run Something down. needs Run to be down. said. Swagoo, I love you. And you're right. But let me ask you a question. Is Jerry Jones doing an interview the reason that Jordan Love carved up that defense the other day? <laughs> the reason they couldn't stop the run, the reason that Dak looked like he had never played a big game before in his entire life. Let's stop blaming Jerry Jones for the Cowboys not being prepared to play the one game of the season Let that mattered the most, Marcus. Go ahead. No, you're right, you're right, you're right when it comes to being prepared. When we sat on your set all year long after Leighton Van Der Esch got hurt, did we see a linebacker get signed by the Dallas Cowboys? No. There you go. Did we see a running back? Who's the general manager? Nope. Yeah. So they Who's the general manager? That? Yeah, yeah, that's Jerry. But, but that's not what we're talking about. Gee, other not, teams gee, that is there, what we're talking lot, about. There's a lot of blame to go around. And you, you, along with other people, I've had this conversation with. Gee, just go back and look at the last four or five Super Bowl champions. Look at how aggressive they've been about getting mm-hmm. championship caliber players. <laughs> Dallas has stood pat. They signed Stephon Gilmore. Great. Stephon Gilmore is a really good cornerback. Did we think that that was going to put them over the hump as winning nope. the Super Bowl? No, I, bro, I have sat on this show time and time again and told y'all that Dallas <laughs> roster is an issue when you get to the point of winning a Super Bowl. If we're just talking about winning games, phenomenal. Thank you. They are, they are a really good roster. I'm not saying they suck, but when we get to the point of winning Super Bowls, there is a difference in what teams that have won them. There you go. Speak it. what Dallas has done. We roll on. It's all about the coach. There you go. Marcus Spears. Bro, I, I know when I say it, I know when I say things like that, that nobody cares, nobody listens. But you have to look at this and say, if San Francisco with a loaded roster isn't standing pat, when you can look and say, where is there a weakness on San Francisco? 
It's not in the skill of players. You got the best running back. Your quarterback is really good. You got Debo. You got Ayuk. You got um, Kittle. You got Trent Williams. That's six guys right there that are in the tops. Top ten at least. Probably top five in every position. Some of them could be even the top ones like Christian McCaffrey as well as uh, Trent Williams. And yet those guys aren't standing pat. They're going out and getting more players. And if you look at those guys and those players and say, yeah, we can compete with Rico Gathers and Tony Pollard with what they have with Christian McCaffrey? No. No. If you look and say, you know, although Ferguson is getting better, you can't look. If you go man for man for man for man, your roster isn't anywhere close to it. Now, you can do that with the Eagles. The Eagles, they just underperformed. They, you can definitely see coaching matters because that team literally fell apart. But if you're going to hold on to Mike McCarthy or bring anybody else in, you have to change your ways of just bringing in so-so free agents. you got to make a commitment to say, I'm going to bring in some studs or else we're just going to be right where we are right now. And that's all I have to say about that, good people. Um, I do need to check out. I know my man Ron Oliver sent me another track. Um, I, I think it's probably a joke on me. He's like, you got to have fun with it, bro. So I'll download that and see what that sounds like. The joke always seems to be on me.